Hey everyone, it's Maury. Today I'm going to give you an overview of the power systems in my Winnebago Rialta. Um, I will go over the battery systems and then how it generates AC power. I'll talk a little bit about some of the things that have been done to it and then also some of the things that I'm going to do to it. One thing to remember is there are differences from model year to model year. So for instance, with mine being a 2004, I have a different generator than some of the early models came with. If you have any specific questions about the differences and features from model year to model year, you can visit rialtainfo.com and it's a repository of everything Winnebago Rialta. It's a great resource if you're just interested in them or if you're shopping for one or even if you own one. Um, it gives you a lot of good information about how to keep it maintained, the different parts that are required for it, things like that. So without further ado, let's get started. And I think I will start with the battery systems. So we'll start with what the van came with originally. And in this compartment underneath the floor is where the batteries live. This is a pair of Group 27 uh, flooded batteries. It has them connected in parallel for a total of 210 amp hours of which you know we effectively have about 50% available. There's also an isolation solenoid. This allows two things. Um, one, it allows the engine alternator to charge it, but it keeps these batteries isolated so that the starter battery doesn't siphon power from them. It also allows us to manually override that so that if your engine battery is dead, you can start your car, or well, in this case the van, from these batteries. And there's a switch up here that allows that, and it's called auxiliary start. If you press and hold that, it uh, will connect these batteries to your starter battery so that you can uh, effectively jumpstart your van. It's a really neat feature. It's something that I'm trying to not lose and as I go forward with my upgrades I'm going to try to keep this functionality in place. The Rialta itself comes with a small starter battery under the hood and a 150 amp alternator so it's a slightly higher output alternator. Um, definitely not like you would see in some of the newer rigs that have 250 to 300 amp alternators. But for something like this, it's more than sufficient. Moving on to AC power, um, this rig came with an Onan 2800 microlight generator capable of producing 25 to 30 amps of power. Primarily for this monstrosity, um, this is a roof air conditioner this one actually has uh, heat strips in it as well, so it can operate as a, uh, an air conditioner, but it will also provide some heat, um, which is a nice feature. The problem is that it requires a lot of power to run it. So you have one of two choices. Either you run it from the generator, which is noisy and um, uses your fuel from the van, or you plug into shore power, this model, and I believe all of the models, have a 45 amp inverter charger under the seat here, and um, it will take a 30 amp standard RV uh, plug-in, and that will run all of the AC stuff as well as charge the batteries. The problem with that is that its operating voltage is 13.6 volts, I believe, which is not enough to charge lithium batteries appropriately. So anything that I do with lithium has to be done separately with a DC to DC converter. Alternately, I could upgrade the uh, converter charger that's in the van, but I probably won't do that. And instead I will keep those systems modular. So what's been done since the van was built? A previous owner actually did a couple of things. They installed this inverter which actually combats the problem that we were just talking about with the generator. If you need something just real quick to power, say for instance, like what I would use it for, a 
collapsible electric kettle to heat my water for my coffee. Then you can just plug into this for a few minutes and it is connected to these batteries underneath here. So that's an easy way to get some quick power when you need it. When the previous owner had this installed, they also had a solar panel installed on the roof, which I believe is a 65 watt panel. And it also came with a little generic solar charger that was underneath this. Since then, I have upgraded the solar charger to something a little more modern that will also handle a lithium profile. That leads us right into what are some of the upgrades that have been made. Well, obviously, the inverter here and the solar panel on the roof, uh, which were in the van when I bought it. The generic solar controller that was mounted in here, um, I actually replaced with an EP Ever tracer. Uh, this is a 20 amp solar controller and it came with the MT50 monitor. This has profiles for lithium batteries. Um, it will also charge flooded batteries and gel cells and everything else. But this gives me the ability to drop in something else and still be able to appropriately charge it. I'll hang on to this inverter just because it's nice to have. I can't use it for what I'm doing here because it doesn't have a terminal block to wire into the um, breaker box. So this I can use in another location just to run some uh, AC power but I had to buy a new inverter to accomplish what I'm trying to do here. So now that we've determined everything that's kind of in the van, what am I going to do with it? Well, for starters, I'm going to remove the overhead air conditioner. This draws a lot of power and it's way too much power for the batteries that I have in the van. But to be honest, even if I did have enough battery power to run this, I still probably wouldn't use it. My previous rig, the Hymer Active, had 400 amp hours of battery power where I effectively have about 105. Um, and I still didn't use the air conditioner in that. I mean, I used it a couple of times just because I could, but in reality, um, it was still a huge power consumer and it was very loud and I just never really needed to use it. So instead, I'm going to replace this with a Max Air Deluxe uh, overhead fan, sort of like the fantastic fan that I have in the van already. Now, the one that I have is a manual uh, fan, and it's over the bathroom, which um, I don't mind so much that it's manual, but I am going to replace this one with one that will both pull air out and bring it in, so it's a fresh air intake as well and it has a remote control. Plus, it can be open while the van is moving or if it's raining, which is a really nice feature. So that will eliminate a huge amount of my AC power needs. After that, the only two items, technically three, but the only two items that are left in the van that require AC power are the microwave and the water heater. The microwave is a 700 watt unit and um, it really doesn't run very long. I mean, I use it for a minute or two at a time to warm something up and that's about it. I'm never going to use it for half an hour at a time. And then the water heater um, is a 1400 watt unit, which is a significant amount of power, but it has a fairly quick recovery time. And so to heat up the four gallons of water that's in it wouldn't take that long. The Rialta also has a heat exchanger, so I can run the van engine and it will actually heat the water in the water heater from the engine coolant, which is a really nice feature if for some reason you don't have availability for power. Um, you can just run the engine for a little while and still get hot water. Or if you're driving, by the time you get to your destination, your water is hot and ready to go. There is not a propane option for this water heater, so it's AC or engine cooling or engine heating only. So what does that all mean? Well, there's a few things involved. Uh, first off, I have a new inverter coming that I can wire into the system, connect to my existing batteries, and run the remaining AC appliances once the air conditioner is gone. The new inverter has a terminal block that I can wire it directly into my breaker box and operate all of the outlets, 
which in turn operate the microwave or the water heater. So I can run everything from battery power, um, especially once the air conditioner is gone. That also means that my reliance on AC power um, goes down quite a bit. So that gives me the opportunity to drop the generator completely. Once I've done that and made some of these upgrades, not only will I gain some additional functionality, um, in part meaning that I can power the devices without firing up the generator, but I'm going to drop about 150 pounds of weight that this thing has to carry. The generator itself weighs somewhere around 90 or so pounds, and then the air conditioner is another 60 or 70 pounds. And then I add in a couple of the components like the fan and the inverter, and my net gain is about 150 pounds. Uh, and that can only be a positive. I know this was a pretty quick overview, but if you have any specific questions about what I'm doing, feel free to leave them in the comments below and we can have a, a discussion about it. The next videos that I do will involve removing and replacing this air conditioning unit with my Max Air Deluxe fan. Um, also, we will do one for removing the uh, existing inverter that's on the floor up there and installing the new inverter as well as wiring it into the uh, breaker box. And then we can talk about future plans. Um, you know, I do have some designs on installing lithium batteries in this rig. That'll be a little more of a, an involved thing because I'll have to put in a DC to DC converter. I'll have to decide how I want to handle um, charging them. I may have room on the roof for another solar panel once I get the air conditioner removed. So that's something else that I'll have to think through. In the meantime, I'm gonna sit here and just ponder and look around and see where I'm going to install the inverter and just kind of mentally map out how I'm going to dig into some of this stuff. So with that, uh, I wanna thank you for watching. And like I said before, if you have any questions, let me know. But um, stay tuned for those uh, upgrade videos. The Max Air fan will arrive tomorrow along with my inverter and then I can just decide when I want to tear into some of these things. The last step would be dropping the generator and um, kind of buttoning everything up, but I can do some of these things in the meantime and just add functionality. So stay tuned for those videos, and as always, until next time, have a great day.